Thank you for visiting my presentation. My name is Kennelly Edler. I am a third year PhD student at the United Nations University Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability, UNUIAS. My work is currently titled Helping Living Heritage to Survive, Youths in Luang Prabang, Lao PDR, and Sustainable Development. This is a collaborative project between the United Nations University and the Tokyo Institute of Technology in Japan. This project is funded by the Grant for Global sustainability from the Ministry of Education in Japan. This slide is a short introduction of the members of our team. During the project, I formed part of the Innovation and Education Program at UNU IAS under the direction of my supervisor, Dr. Yongwi Park. First, a short definition of Intangible Cultural Heritage, or ICH, as defined by the UNESCO. It is essentially the practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, skills, as well as the instruments, objects, artifacts, and cultural spaces that communities, groups, or individuals recognize as part of the cultural heritage. For example, the UNESCO inscribed the French baguette last year as an ICH, and the Japanese kabuki show was inscribed in 2008. The context of this presentation is situated in a town called Luang Prabang in Lao PDR, which was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. This brings a lot of social and economic benefits to the town. However, the tourism boom has also threatened the safeguarding of its ICH. While there are several issues in safeguarding ICH in Luang Prabang, here are some of the main ones. Firstly, the lack of ICH culture bearers who play a role in transmitting ICH knowledge. Culture bearer refers to a person who has practiced an ICH for many years and has become an expert in this ICH. Secondly, the lack of future artisans due to the youth's diminishing interest in becoming themselves culture bearers. And thirdly, the insufficient interventions to promote the ICH knowledge transmission. This slide contains my problem statement and summarizes more in-depth the issues with ICH in Luang Prabang. From left to right, we can see, first, there are challenges in the education of youths because there are several urgent needs in the education sector that need to be addressed. Second, there is a low awareness of ICH in youth. Efforts for ICH have been made for national capacities, but not for civil society. A gap is present in awareness raising projects for civil society and youth. Third, mass tourism as an ICH threat due to the rising number of tourists. In my study, the problem statement is this. Although Lao youth face challenges in their education and their awareness on the value of ICH is low, and mass tourism presents a threat to ICH, there is a gap in empirical research on the learning of ICH and using ICT among Lao youths. The underlying assumption is that the transmission of ICH aids sustainable development because it strengthens the economic and social dimension by developing youth as human capital through education, attaining employment and income. My study is part of a three-year larger project, which includes year one, creating an ICH database for Long Prabang, and the focus of this presentation, which is the youth forum in year two, to engage young people in the safeguarding of ICH. This year, year three, a teacher training program will be developed so that ICH could be part of local or even national curriculum. This is a picture of the participating youths on the last day of the Youth Forum, which was named Building Community-Centered Innovations to Promote Sustainable Development and Safeguard ICH. The Youth Forum aimed at building greater ICH awareness and fostering a community of practice among the younger generations and local culture bearers as they act as change agents in their communities and continue to recreate and revitalize their ICH. The Youth Forum engaged 25 Luang Prabang youths recruited through the UNESCO website. They worked in groups of four to six members with an ICH of their choice. And they were between 14 to 31 years old and represented various Luang Prabang villages and ethnicities such as Humong, Taijuan, and Kamu. 
The Youth Forum was designed to support cultivating the community of practice, or COP, among the youth members and the local culture bearers. It was comprised of self-learning modules providing the students background knowledge on ICH via a set of self-study videos. We met every weekend to discuss critical issues on ICH and ICH safeguarding efforts in Luang Prabang, online as well as offline. There were storytelling and media making workshops, as well as introduction to design thinking process for them to be able to conduct their own field work during the third phase called ICH Ideathon, where they collaborated with local ICH bearers in producing a short video documentary on the ICH domain of their interest. And they made solutions presented to address the ICH needs and problems. They presented their solutions on Showcase Day at the end of the Youth Forum. My study would focus on three areas, ICH and education in orange, ICH and sustainability in green, and ICH and community of practice in blue. For ICH and education, I will apply phenomenography. Phenomenography is a second order perspective. It describes the experiences of people of a phenomenon rather than the phenomenon itself. It examines the collective experience, but also differences in conceptions in a group. I will apply it as an empirical research methodology for researching and identifying the variety of ways in which the participants of the youth forum experience their field work in their local communities that practice ICH, their intergenerational learning and teaching of ICH using ICT skills. For ICH and sustainability, I will do a qualitative analysis of economic, social, and environmental aspects of ICH in Luang Prabang participating youths. It will be complemented with data from a DCAP survey, DCAP meaning Digital Kids Asia Pacific. It will provide insights into the participants' digital citizenship in areas such as digital literacy, participation and agency in advocating for ICH on being a youth ambassador, in digital creativity and innovation, and provide certain demographic data on the students' background. For ICH and community of practice, I will apply the framework of Wenger and Al to assess the value creation formed in the community of practice of the youths in the Youth Forum. Zooming into one area of my study, now I will provide an example of ICH and education using phenomenography. My aims will be to provide a phenomenographic analysis of the community of practice experience of one youth group and its selected culture bearer, and to present their experiences in an outcome space that illustrates the structure of the varied qualitative categories of description. I hypothesize that examining these experiences will contribute to knowledge about subjective concepts and understandings of youth members on learning ICH in their local community. For the Youth Forum, the macro level is community of practice, where several groups worked on different cultural practices, each with a culture expert. The youth co-created and co-designed their final projects with the local culture bearers. For example, a group worked with an artisan basket weaver to make solar cell powered wicker lamps. Two groups worked on safeguarding local pottery ICH to create an e-commerce website and developed more pottery patterns. For this presentation, I will focus on Wang Prabang recital reading. First to the rationale of my examples. I have three reasons for focusing on recital reading. One, because it is an oral tradition without a cultural artifact and therefore entirely abstract. Two, because neglecting ICH as a living heritage bears the risk of turning heritage sites, such as the town of Long Prabang, into spaces devoid of their original social and cultural significance. And three, because it is the most threatened practice of the four ICH practices presented by the youths in Luang Prabang. The reason for focusing on phenomenography and the outcome space is firstly because it is a research methodology that is useful in researching and identifying the variety of ways in which the youth participants experience their fieldwork 
in their local communities with the culture bearer. Second, because phenomenography is a second order perspective. It describes the experiences of people of a phenomenon rather than the phenomenon itself. And thirdly, because phenomenography examines the collective experience, the personal experience, but also differences in conceptions in a group. What is traditional recital reading? In this cultural practice, knowledge, cultural and social values, and collective memory are passed down through generations by word of mouth. This specific recital reading of the Youth Forum is about the advice or instruction of elderly people on, for example, roles of husbands and wives, and it uses coherent words and rhythms of the language. In order to experience traditional recital reading and the work of the youths, here is the final project presented by their group, the Elephant Group, a documentary style video. The original is a seven minute short documentary. For the sake of this presentation, we have added subtitles and shortened it to one minute. จากนี้เฮาเฮาก็บ่หูกันเรื่องนี้ก้าวหูในหนึ่งเนาะหน้าอีบ่าหูบ้านไกลกันเนาะโยนมาอ่านหนังสือนี่มันฮิตข้องพ
made them realize their own lack of knowledge and identify what new knowledge they gained, appreciating more their language and culture. This learning motivated the youth members to continue advocating for raising awareness on recitations even after the forum to counteract the lack of youth interest. They perceived their interactions as teaching the culture bearer as well. In conclusion, the outcome space reveals that despite its low vitality, youth members can be motivated to safeguard threatened culture, cultural practices. One, because their sense of identity is enhanced, setting the newfound knowledge in the context of their community history. Two, because it leads them to recognize and appreciate new cultural knowledge, value the Lao language with the rhythms they discovered. Three, because it results in learning between themselves and the culture bearer. And four, challenge them to find innovative solutions. This finding is important for research on how to revitalize and invigorate threatened cultural practices. So far, other preliminary findings are the role of the youths in safeguarding ICH. 18 out of 23 interviewees expressed their interest in safeguarding their culture. Environmental degradation as an ICH threat, where two out of 23 interviewees find environmental factors affect raw materials for the production of cultural products, and the weekend practice and transmission of ICH as a threat, because 17 out of 23 interviewees state that ICH practices have been negatively affected by the loss of interest of younger generations. Thank you for your attention.